մենք մեր արունը տաք է չէ մտածի մենք մեկի չտաք ենք եթե չես կարող բացատրես ամերիկան with the war and there was a lot of controversy and that led to you know uh, Ilayev uh, coming out and going to the Erdogan and they had his backing but nobody was really backing up Pashinyan Putin was kind of playing new the game of what Pashinyan or whoever leads Armenia who you create allies with you have to ask yourself one question I had an interview scheduled with the PM prime minister it was supposed to be done with Pashinyan whether you like her or not Kim Kardashian's brought a lot of eyeballs to Armenians but what we need right now to young Armenians that are watching this here's what we need to young Armenians that are watching this maman kam papen they're coming from a amen medzev gnumen kam leneni komits kam staleni komits naitges du piti kam doktor elnes kam piti chamanum you know in chat ha so So I am originally from Iran. I was born and raised in Iran and I lived there for 10 years to a mother who's Armenian. My mother's name is Bohosyan and that's her that's her father's and my grandfather. My grandmother's name is Amirian, the last name. And they were they they left Baku, they came to Pahlavi, Bandar Pahlavi, which is Port Pahlavi, which is they've changed the name ever since. And my dad is a Syrian, the last name Bed David, and then you have an Assyrian father and Armenian mother and born and raised in Iran. Yes, when we would uh, drive to two places. I loved going to Bandar Pahlavi because my uh, my grandparents lived there on my mom's side and we would have the best kind of food, everything, caviar, uh, or when we would go to Abali in Iran, which was in the mountains and you would have incredible liver and dukh, which we loved having. So you have have good memories from Iran. So you know the the challenge of being Armenian and Assyrian Armenians and Assyrians for whatever reason are very competitive with each other. They both, you know, uh, take pride in who were the first Christians. Is it the Armenians were the first Christians or Assyrians were first Christians? So my parents' families were very competitive. Uh but uh you know the, the, when you go out and uh, trying to go play in the park, you know, like in America, they were not too comfortable having their kids play outside. So in Iran I never played outside till till 10 years old because my dad wasn't too trusting of how safe it was. So if I ever played at a park or outside, my dad had to be there. He was never comfortable with that. Very strict, very disciplined dad. And then when I went to Germany, my mom couldn't control me. I was out till 10, 11 o'clock at night as a 10-year-old kid because I was finally free, but Iran was a different story. Now I don't blame my dad for thinking that, but that's how it was in Iran. So when I came here at 12 years old, I had a, a very uh, strong accent. I still have an accent, but I couldn't pronounce that. There was a show on TV called Gilligan's Island. And Gilligan's Island, I was always calling it Island because that S is in it. So people would laugh and say, "What show are you watching?" I said, "Last night I watched Gilligan's Island." And they said, "It's Island." I couldn't promote uh, uh, I couldn't pronounce government. It was government. and i had a hard time pronouncing wednesday you know you know wednesday wednesday was challenging but you know for the most part you had to adjust and learn the american culture fairly quickly what helped was the fact that i moved to glendale california i went to glendale high school i went to john uh, i went to wilson junior high school and glendale has a lot of armenians so we would play basketball at rdy rdy wide and every one of my friends that i hung out with every one of the guys i hung out with 
that were my main friends were either Armenian or Assyrian, every one of them. So it wasn't that challenge. The challenge was joining the army because the army, there was nobody that was your culture. But Glenda was actually an easy transition. So when I joined the army, I went to a, a boot camp at South Carolina, Fort Jackson. And now I, was, I thought I was the only Assyrian and Middle Eastern Armenian uh, at this base until one day I'm at the store, the military store, they call it the PX. PX is like Walmart of the military. So everybody goes to the PX. And I'm looking at this one guy, he's looking at me, and we keep looking at each other. And we get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. It was a guy whom... Uh, he and I, uh, we had some challenges in Glendale Community College. He was part of a gang, and we had a fight. And then later on, we run into each other in the Army. His nickname, I couldn't remember, Sleepy, I think his nickname may have been. We're hugging each other. We're just, you know, I can't, are you Armenian? We're talking Armenian. We're together every week. It was a great time. We ended up becoming very, very good friends the time we were together in the Army. That was 20 years ago. I mean, we're talking about 22, 21 years ago. And, uh, uh, but aside from that, it was interesting seeing how people from Mississippi, North Dakota, you know, South Dakota, what they thought about Iranians, Armenians, Assyrians, what their interpretation was of Armenian. Many of them had no idea what an Armenian was. They didn't know what an Assyrian was. The only ones who knew what Assyrian was, the ones that read the Bible, were in the Bible that talks about Assyrians and Babylonians. And Iranians, if you thought about Iranians, you didn't think about, hey, it's an Iranian, it's a friendly ally. You thought about Iranian as an enemy. So it was a bit of an adjustment to kind of go through it on the military. But uh, it ended up being one of the greatest experiences and decisions I ever made as a young man, ever. Yeah, so when I got out of the army, I wanted to be a bodybuilder. And the one man I looked up to at the time was Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you were in my office barracks, it was posters of Arnold everywhere. Like I was going to be a bodybuilder. I was a big guy. I lifted weights, you know, six times a week. And I was going to go into Hollywood. I was going to be an actor. I was going to be a governor. I was going to be, I was going to, that, that's the route I was going to go. And then I met a girl named jean Vier who at Venice Beach, she, uh, uh, her and I met and she was working at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter at the time. We started dating and we became friendly with each other and she introduced me to Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. When I went to Morgan Stanley Dean Witter to become a financial advisor, I didn't have a four-year degree, I didn't have a two-year degree, I didn't have anything like that going for myself. And, uh, uh, but I, I, I knew how to tell good jokes. So on my resume, the cover letter, I put my best joke on it and I faxed it to 100 different places and I got 30 callbacks and they said, we like your jokes but you're not qualified. But 15 of them liked my joke and they wanted to do an interview with me. So after 15 interviews, I got three job offers. I took one of them. I became a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter in Glendale at 801 North Brand Boulevard, I think, right off the 134 freeway. And uh, I got into the business. I fell in love with finance. I fell in love with numbers, data, you know, how you can grow your investments for yourself. And then I went from investments more to the insurance side and eventually was in Transamerica for seven and a half years, October of 09, started my own insurance company with 66 agents. Today we have over 20,000 agents in 49 states, including Puerto Rico and nearly 150 offices. And we've grown it from where we were at writing, you know, 50 policies a month to now doing 12,000 insurance policies a month. So PHP Agency, when we started it, you know, I was uh, uh, somebody who looked at the marketplace and kind of saw trends that I had not seen before. For example, uh, in the financial industry, nobody was using social media in the 2000s. When Facebook first came out, uh, when Facebook first, first came out, they were not comfortable with it. They were not comfortable with MySpace. I don't know if you remember MySpace back in the days. It was very much of, you can't talk to clients, you got to be careful with this. And I said, this is the future. We have to definitely think about social media as a great equalizer. So I looked at a few different uh, uh, components that were taking place. I wrote a book called The Next Perfect Storm, and it was about five criteria. One of them was baby boomers, 76 million babies that were born between 46 to 64. They're coming to the age of retirement. They need help. I looked at the average age of an insurance agent was 59 at the time. They needed to get younger because most of them were retiring and leaving the business, right? Then it was uh, minorities, not a lot of minorities were getting involved in the insurance industry. It was, then it was women, not a lot of women were selling insurance. And uh, the last one was social media. So on the women's side with PHP Agency, 
We are 51% women and 54% Latino is what we are. So it's a very minority driven company um, that at the same time, you know, we put our event together a year and a half at the Mirage. Uh, we had President Bush at the event. We had Kobe Bryant at the event, the late Kobe Bryant and others who were at that event. And this next event that we're hosting in the next four or five months uh, will be at the MGM Grand and we'll have 15,000 people there. So, but there was a niche that we found and we stuck to it and it worked very well. Yeah, so one day I'm creating content. My YouTube channel was called Patrick Bed David. It was just my name and I'm growing. And one day uh, I sat down and I said, I, I don't know if I like the name that we have because I love my name, but I think this is bigger than one name. I think this is a media company that we build. If we build this, we have to do it right. I have no desire to be a motivational speaker. I get offers to speak all the time. I turn them down regularly because that's not what I signed up for. I like one-on-one. -on -one. I like this. Don't get me wrong. Speaking from stage is easy for me. But I like relationships is what I enjoy doing at this phase of my game. So value tainment, one day we're sitting in the room, and it's a conference room, and we're coming up with names. So we have to think about a different name. So I said, what do we do on this YouTube channel anyway? You know, it's a content for entrepreneurs and business owners. So we wrote capitalism. We wrote entrepreneurship. We wrote business. We bring value. We entertain. It's becoming a movement. So then I said, value, entertainment, movement. We put it together, value tainment. I thought I was the first person to ever come up with the name Valuetainment. So we go online, we're going to go to GoDaddy to buy the domain Valuetainment. So we go to GoDaddy, Valuetainment.com, and it says Taken. I said, Taken? There's no way somebody thought about this idea. Anyways, we go on Valuetainment.com. It is owned, it's a publicly traded company in Germany, owned by, my, by a man named uh, Dirk. I sent an email to him. I said, I'd like to buy your domain. He says, I'm a publicly traded company. I said, I know, but I want to buy your domain. He says, I'm not selling it to you. Finally, he came back, he said, $500,000. I said, look, I just want you to know, I'm not paying $500,000, but I want your domain. We went back and forth. Three years later, he noticed that everybody online, when they thought about Valuetainment, they thought about us. He changed his name to Value Tees. He sold me the domain Valuetainment for a, you know, shy of $30,000. We got the name Valuetainment, and now it's becoming a media company, and it's uh, grown rapidly. We went from zero to nearly three million plus subscribers, and uh, we have a few billion total online views. So it's been very interesting and a fun ride. So what things I would have done differently or mistakes I've made? Look, uh, I've made uh, millions of mistakes when I run the company. Uh, identifying who you really want to put as the leader of an organization or as a executive that you want to highlight. A lot of times business owners we, uh, uh, we don't identify the right person to build up. We're just kind of like, oh, we're just happy to have people here. Let's just get to work rather than no. Here's what I'm looking for. Essentially, it's almost like a person who's single, who is dying to be in a relationship to get married because all his friends or her friends are getting married. So it's like, I also want to get married. But that's not how you get married. The way you get married is you find out what you don't want. You know, I'm not looking for this. This is not going to work for me. So you come up with a set of non-negotiables then you go recruit for a wife or a husband, right? So I was initially bringing any kind of executive, and then I realized this is just not going to work. I created a criteria that was a non-negotiable, and even if I met with you, if you had a degree from Harvard, you know, Yale, Penn, wherever you went to, if you didn't meet my criteria, we just couldn't work together, no matter how great you were. And then uh, at the same time, uh, you know, aside from that were some of the things when you're uh, uh, building a business, knowing the fact that uh, when you're raising money, it's a little bit more of a technical thing. When you're raising money, um, you have to make sure your partners are coming in are partners that you really, really want to be in business with. At one point, it was going in the wrong direction. Eventually, I partnered up with the right people and we brought the money in that we wanted. And obviously, the rest is history. You know, I think that, that my favorite part of my, my business journey is the fact that this, I see it as a game. And what I mean by game is the fact that it's like you're playing a board game. You're playing a game. I, when I was a kid, 16 years old, I used to play Final Fantasy. And this is 26 years ago. I used to play Final Fantasy and I used to, put, used to play Fester's Quest or Zelda. And it was a game. You have to figure out to go get these you know, sword over here because it's the only way you can beat this, you know, guy. And then you have to go from this side and get the access to this code and grow it. So 
business is fully a game. I wake up every morning thinking I'm playing a game. It's, it's amazing to me how much fun I'm having doing business. It's, it's, a, it's video game except it's a business, exactly how I see it every day. I think our business is tremendously impacting others, both on the insurance side as well as the uh, media side. On the business side, you know, this last week, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, we were in Hawaii. We took 450 of our guys to Hawaii and we left and we came back. A couple of our guys decided to stay behind. I know this is a tragic story, but uh, uh, one of them uh, had an accident in Hawaii by a uh, waterfall and they had a bad accident and they ended up passing away. And one of them was in his mid twenties and the other one was in his early thirties. The one that was in his early thirties, he's like my younger son, um, they both passed away. One of them had two kids that were left behind. The other one had a family that was left behind. Young guy, single. The young guy, single, parents, good looking family, good looking kids, just heartbreaking when we got this news. I couldn't believe it, my body stopped. But the, but the younger one got a $350,000 policy that was sent to the family. The other gentleman that died, his wife got $2 million that are gonna be given to him. Angelo is the younger, Angelo Ruiz, the oldest one is a, a Sebastian Vargas. And I've known these guys for a decade, Sebastian Vargas. And they got nearly $2 million of insurance policy. I've seen stories like this hundreds of times. And so when you sit with someone at first and you're selling insurance, it's kind of like, oh, I'm selling insurance, I'm gonna make money. And then when they call you and they tell you, please tell me my insurance is still on the books because my husband just passed away. My wife just passed away. My brother just passed away. You can deliver that. There's an impact being taken place there. The other element of the business, what I do that's very impactful, is the fact that we are taking people who have never been business owners, never been self-sufficient, they're making maybe $50,000 a year income and bringing them on board and helping them become business owners, run their own businesses, doing a quarter million, a half a million, a million dollar year income, being independent where they're not relying on a source to take care of them financially. And then on the value side, my passion is capitalism. My passion is business. My passion is teaching people how to make money and put a team together. That is my passion. I like finding solutions. When I go into a restaurant, a person may go into a restaurant and they look at the restaurant and say, oh wow, look at all these beautiful people that are here. I go into the restaurant and I say, why would they put that table out? You're not walking comfortably. What if one of the waiters walks by and the person goes back and the drink falls? That's gotta be six inches more there. Why is the waitress answering the question the way she did? Why didn't they upsell the dessert? How come the other guy didn't come and help me bring the drinks while they saw there was no water there and it's empty? They could have drank, then you know, he had the pitcher, all you had to do is pour two pitchers. Uh, wow, look at these guys, how great they work as a team. What was that guy? Can you call your manager over? How often do you guys train your people? That's my lens. All I think about when I see businesses, it's all your angles with camera, the team, what they're wearing. My, my mind is always finding ways to improve things and, and unfortunately I can't help myself. Believe me, it's a little annoying sometimes when I'm around myself because all I think about is how we can make something better. My brain is wired that way, but uh, I'm enjoying seeing the impact that Ten is making worldwide. Uh, did I ever visualize myself being where I am today? Not at this level. I knew I was gonna win for my dad and the reason why I say this to you, not at this level, is because I remember one day I get a call from my sister and I'm at my uh, mom's place my sister, my parents got a divorce. My sister says, dad had a heart attack. I said, what do you mean dad had a heart attack? Dad had a heart attack. So I go to the hospital and I see dad had a heart attack. I was 23 years old and I'm partying six days a week. I would go to clubs Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. I was so committed, it was six nights a week. Monday was recovery. I went to Vegas every other week to party and I did this regularly. Regularly I was partying, right? And my dad has the heart attack. I go to UCLA Medical Center. I see my dad sitting on the bed and he's asking for water. The lady's not coming up. She's like, he's asking for help, they're not coming up. I go to them, I said, what are you doing? How come you're not coming to my dad? And my dad's asking you for help. Said, Listen, relax, we got 50 other patients here. And I lost it. It was a bad situation for me because I overreacted. And a lady finally said to me, she said, I'm sorry, did you pay for this insurance? No, taxpayers did. This is free. This is called government insurance. So be happy the fact that someone is taking care of your dad. Cops came, security came, they kicked me out. I couldn't be around my dad in the hospital. I got escorted out. My dad's over there sitting and saying, Patrick, calm down, calm down, calm down. I went in the car. I was driving a Ford Focus at the time because I was in debt $49,000. I, I lost money gambling in Vegas, a bunch of different things. 
I go downstairs, I'm sitting in the car, crying like a little baby because my dad is on his deathbed. If this man dies for the rest of my life, I'm going to feel guilty that he died because of stress over money. He's not sitting there because he's having health issues due to cancer, which you can't control. It's something that was caused by stress, which is money. I went to sleep that night, I woke up, and I had a look on my face uh, that I've had for 19 years since that day. I asked all my friends to stop calling me, stop uh, texting me, I'm not going to parties, I'm not going anywhere with you, I'm not going to the nightclubs, nobody believed it. Never went back to the clubs, I just went to work and all of a sudden I started doing well for myself and then my dad on his birthday said, Dad, hey, you know, I got a surprise for you today. What are we doing? Get in the car. Come outside. Limo comes, picks him up. Where are we going? I said, don't worry about it. Let's just go. We just go. And we pull up in front of Staples Center. He says, oh, why are we here? I don't know. Just, Dad, just enjoy yourself. So we go. Security, Staples Center, Lakers. Oh, so we're going to a Laker game? Yeah, we're going to a Laker game. Security comes, escorts my dad. And we're walking. And we're walking, walking, walking. And security says, here, we have to take this elevator. It takes him down. Walks him up. He says, Patrick, they're taking me all the way to the floor. I said, Dad, just follow the man. Why are you asking so many questions? He's, you know, my dad and I are best friends. So he takes him. He sits him right next to Kobe Bryant. And my dad is a big Kobe Bryant fan, he and I. He says, I can't believe I'm next to Kobe. My dad's been all over the world with me. I have incredible memories with my dad and my family. When one of the things about us Armenians and Assyrians, the way we are, our blood is boiling. I don't know why we're like this. I can't help myself. People ask me, why are you like this? I said, I'm not the only one that's like this. Go around any Armenian. Go around Assyrians. We're hot-blooded. We have something in our spirit that's very, you know, fiery, and we want to make our family proud. We want to make our blood proud. And so I saw that happening to my dad, and I couldn't believe it. And from that moment on, obviously, it's America. It's not hard to make money, and the times are very easy to be able to make money. And uh, we've had good things that have happened to us. And every day I wake up in the morning, I feel like I'm the luckiest man alive. So my relationship with the Armenian community is very interesting because when I went to Germany and I was at the camp, there was no Armenians there. So I got close to Albanians, Czechs, all that other stuff. When I came to, when, and when I was in Iran, I went to an Armenian school, Gulbengian, which I was there for many years. And my friend Armon from Rafi's place in Glendale, him and I went to Gulbengian together. Matter of fact, I think there's about 10 of us who are in the States who went to Gulbengian together and we know each other. Obviously we send pictures and all that stuff. Oh, that's me, this is me. But when I joined the Army, the relationship was slightly different. When I came back from the Army, I stayed close to my Armenian friends and uh, seen what's happened with them and my Syrian friends. And obviously, every year, you know what happens in April when we are going out there campaigning to hopefully have one president or administration make the fact that Armenian genocide took place official. And I've, I've uh, uh, spoken about that in public a few times. and. Every time you do, you have a risk because you have the other audience that's going to come back and say, hey, you don't know the truth, you don't know this, you don't know that. But at the end of the day, it's an event that took place and it was both Armenians and Assyrians that took place, a million and a half Armenians, you know, 750,000, 500,000 to 750,000 Greeks and you got another half a million, you know, Assyrians that we're talking about. This is an event that happened, I think it's been accepted uh, and recognized by 60 countries or so, except for one. And it's been very political here. But, you know, when you go somewhere and you run into somebody of your own nationality, when you're in Glendale and you run into Armenians, everyone's Armenian. But when you're in Dallas, Texas, you run into an Armenian, not everybody's Armenian. So when you see an Armenian in Dallas, that emotional connection is a very different connection that you make. And uh, just the other day, I'm over here in uh, Boca Raton, Florida, and I'm going out there having lunch um, at this uh, restaurant that's a Turkish food place restaurant owned by Armenians, because they're Armenians from Turkey. So they're sitting there, hey, you know, tell me about your story. Oh, my East, you know, all this stuff. We're talking to see what they got going on. But uh, look, when we see each other, there's a connection, no matter what you think about. It. There's a connection between Armenians and Assyrians. And I'm, uh, 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 I'm very proud of having that blood within me because it's felt all the time. So, uh, obviously, we were following the events very closely. Uh, I had an interview scheduled with the PM, Prime Minister. It was supposed to be done with Pashinyan. Uh, and it was going to be a big event, but the event that we were going to do with the interview was to raise a lot of money. 
but it was right after the uh, right after the interview he did with BBC, and right after his interview he did with BBC. One thing he did not want to do is any more interviews in English. And although my Armenian is okay, my Armenian is not that strong. And Pashinya's Armenian is incredibly good because he's a journalist. He ran a uh, you know uh, company himself. When you're in the news and you're writing, you have to speak very, very good Armenian. So then there was going to be an interview with our man. I believe the president, uh, uh, we were going to do an interview. But it was a day uh, before Pashinyan came out and said, we have to retreat and not go through with the war. And there was a lot of controversy, and that led to, you know, uh, Ilayev uh, coming out and going to the Erdogan, and they had his backing, but nobody was really backing up Pashinyan, whether it was because he had allies through China, because he had allowed China to invest some money into uh, Armenia, and Putin was kind of playing neutral, and eventually Putin obviously tried to bring both of them together with that meeting that took place. But uh, here's, here's how I see it. I saw stories on both ends. I saw people that were very disappointed with Pashinyan. I mean, if a father sends his 19-year-old son and he loses his 19-year-old son for your vision that you have, that's not a small scar. That's permanent. There's nothing you can do with that father. There's nothing you can do to earn back the respect that you had for him willing to encourage his son to go to war. It's done. That's permanent, right? So he lost a lot of people, and you know, I heard certain people that were going after him negatively in the news, in the media, in the States. And I remember the first time he went Facebook Live. I don't know if you remember when he went first, first face, Facebook Live, and it was millions of people watching to see what he had to say. And if you look at the commentary at the bottom, it wasn't good. It's a lot of bad, but there was some good. But hey, we support him. So then on the other side were the folks who said, you don't know the entire story. You don't know what happened behind closed doors. You don't know why he agreed. You don't know what he agreed on. You know, you don't have what took place over there. And then you have folks come back and say to that, yeah, but if that's the case, why are his own military leaders turning against him? You know, why did he not get his military folks involved? Why did he not go and involve his military leaders to ask him on what happened? My, my biggest concern here is the following. This is by far my biggest concern uh, uh, with this area is it's very important for the Armenian community as we're getting more and more and more credibility and trust within the community. You know, there's this thing with Armenians and Assyrians, very similar. Hey, when they're raising money, be careful because you never know what they're going to raise the money for. Okay, you go back and think about the story of uh, 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 Kirk, Kirkorian, right? When he did what he did for Armenia and went back. And if you ever read his book and find out how we felt about it afterwards, he was disappointed by how the administration ended up using his money, and some other people took advantage of the money. So that's gone away, and Kirk wasn't somebody that was public about it. It was very quiet about it, but his allies spoke about it to others. I, I, I just hope that we go back to a point where we're creating more credibility and trust within the community, where more people want to contribute and support, rather than the level of skepticism that keeps reappearing where people are sitting there saying, Wait, are we going backwards or are we making progress? And a part of that, to me, comes with who you choose to make your allies. You know, when you choose to make your allies certain folks that are not allies of America, you can't expect America support. When you choose to create allies with certain countries that are enemy to state number one, you can't expect America to say, oh, yeah, we're willing to help. It's to yeah, totally, we'll help you, yet your ally is an enemy. What, 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 is, what is the issue here? So. You know, it's similar to what happened in America one time when uh, uh, I think it was President Trump who banned Huawei from doing business in the U.S. I don't know if you remember that. And uh, nobody in the U.S. could do business with Huawei. It was a big hit. And Huawei is a very, very well-known brand. And the CFO of Huawei was in Canada. And she was in Canada, who was the daughter of the CEO of Huawei. But she was in Canada creating a business deal with Iran. And Trump had put sanctions with Iran, saying, hey, wait a minute, Canada, what are you doing here? Canada's like, we're not doing anything with this. Well, Huawei, why are you doing business with Iran? So then Trump put sanctions on Iran, and not just Huawei, but also on Iran. So th the game of what Pashinyan or whoever leads Armenia, who you create allies with, you have to ask yourself one question. The question I think you have to ask yourself is, if we align ourselves with X, Y, Z, Okay, let's just say we align with X, Y, Z. But we want to get close with these guys, hypothetically. 
Say, uh, are you married or no? Are you no, not, yet. not yet. Okay. Say you like a girl named, you know, uh, Mary. Okay. You really like Mary. Matter of fact, you are crazy about Mary. But to get close to Mary, you have to win over her allies. One of her allies is her mom. Another one of them is her sister. Another one of them is her cousin. Another one of them is her brother. Okay. Before you get close to Mary, you have to make sure you can't have bad relationships with mom, brother, best friend, and sister, right? Okay, so what Armenia is doing a little bit, and again, I may be fully wrong and I'm okay with that. I think Armenia, if you want to have a strong relationship with America, you have to be good with mom, sister, best friend, and brother. And I don't know if they're doing that. So if Armenia wants to have America be, hey, we have your back, well, why are you in bed with you know, some of these other companies that you're allowing them to come in Armenia and invest and you, you think anybody in the world right now trusts China? Why are, we, why are we doing that? So there's a part of that. Now, on, to, on the flip side of it, for some folks, and I'm sorry about being long-winded about my answers here because I'm, I have strong opinions on this. On the flip side of it is the following. A, a big part of Armenians' backing comes because of Putin. So where Armenia goes, unfortunately, is where Putin wants Armenia to go because Armenia is not that big and Armenia is not that strong. Ilayev in Azerbaijan is backed up by the biggest military in the Middle East, which is who? Turkey and Erdogan. And Erdogan is feared by everybody. Everybody fears Erdogan. Erdogan has relationships with U.S. because we have three military bases in Turkey. If U.S. announces Armenian genocide as an event that took place and he recognizes it, Erdogan's going to stop all those military bases in Turkey and we're going to be out. So, so, but if Putin gets involved and supports more and backs them up more, which he's not doing, Putin's kind of playing neutral and saying, I'm good with Azerbaijan, I'm good with Armenia because he has a relationship with Erdogan and he wants to make sure they're good. So th there's as much of an influence here of what's going on with Armenia by Putin as anybody else. So when you ask the question about my level of support for the Armenian community, my level of support for the Armenian community has to do with how the leaders make the right sequencing of decision moving forward and who they align themselves up with. As far as Armenians goes, I support Armenians. There's no question about it. Just like America, I may support Americans, but I may not agree with a political leader that we may have. We may, I may not agree with a leader, president that we may have, but I do support the people. So uh, it's a long-winded answer. I'm not sure if that's the question you were expecting. But it is an answer that uh, I am very confident with. And long term, one of my aspirations is to positively impact three communities. One of them is Iran. One of them is Armenia. One of them is Assyrians. I was born in Iran. I am Armenian. I am Assyrian. I've contributed a lot to America. But those three countries matter a lot to me in different ways. So, so to young Armenians, now, uh, when you think about Armenians, you, the one thing channel it into business. If you learn how to channel that energy into business, the, the upside of that is very, very high. The other side, you know, when you think about uh, young Armenians today, one of the best things that's happening today in Armenia, in, to, to the Armenian community, whether you like her or not, Kim Kardashian's brought a lot of eyeballs to Armenians. Some people say, well, you don't understand, but Kim this, Kim that, listen, stop. 20 years, they've had hundreds of billions of views. Everybody around the world follows what they do. Everybody follows what they do. And she respects the Armenian bloodline. Like she's not one that doesn't. Like she went to Armenia, she will, you know, she will be vocal about it. So she's not one that's not willing to also recognize the community. There are a lot of others that are coming up. But what we need right now to young Armenians that are watching this, here's what we need to young Armenians that are watching this. I would love nothing more to have an Armenian uh, professional basketball player, which we have a lot of good Armenian athletes, but sometimes we're not as tall, so we need a little bit of height. So, you know, some the kids that are coming, I think if the Armenian leadership team starts breeding younger people, almost as in, imagine an academy 
where there's a leadership academy that you go to and you send your kids to, where the people who are part of the leadership academy on the Armenian side, they're looking at the kids saying, this guy's brain is so creative. We have to make sure we position you to be able to grow in XYZ area. That guy is so athletic. We have to make sure the best people are coaching this kid here to get him to the next level. This person is so good with math. We have to make sure we position this guy the right way to go be an engineer in Silicon Valley or whatever. This guy is so good with camera work and he thinks about stories. We have to position him to go to USC to the best schools and connect him with the right people to get him there. I think Armenians need to use their connections to help the younger generation coming up uh, in a major way. But uh, if you're a young Armenian entrepreneur right now, if there's ever been a time for you to be a hero, if there's ever been a time for you to be somebody where your community looks at you proudly knowing what you're doing, there's never been a better time today for somebody to rise up and say, I'm going to go do my part. One, selfishly, it's going to benefit you, okay? But collectively, it's going to benefit your community. And we don't need one. We don't need two. We don't need five. We need hundreds and thousands right now to step up to succeed in the world of business because your megaphone will be bigger. The benefit about making money and being successful, sometimes, you know, Hayri comes from mommy at Khosmas, come papi at Khosmas, shot high maman, come papen. They're coming from a, a man in Medzeb, Gnumen, come Lenin, come it, come Stalin, come it, come Gitas in Chemasum. They're going to bite us, Haru, Smarty, Chess, Askano, or Chamanum, which, mom, never be spassy. You say, Kotaret, Asahar, million honey, Aveli, Lava, what the ink carga eta change, you know, he can make change, she can make some change. Togeta make it poga honey. Make your make it mommy, papi, comics, pit is gush, and for Erekin, Mebana, Chenkasum, or Iran Kasman, oh, yes. What the Matazi Terren Umina Amena shot serum Iran Kankimet? You're a mamena. Mamena had to pop in a batata. She, okay. Mamen pities Gusheli make it for Erequet or Hosuma. Do Kohos could shot weight to me. Weight on high range pesas and Kohos could shot the Ujuni. She get influence on each. So Mamen had pop in a pities Gushel and inch and Hosum Iran's Erekel Kiet. What the high parents near us sometimes they, they make the kids think small. And I think this is a collective thing. I think we need to start talking about, hey, it's okay. Gna pogatani, but it's chish sevio gna pogatani. It's okay. Gna business are it's okay. Right now, nai, I have engineers working for me worldwide. Do you know who are some of the best engineers right now? Armenia. And by the way, yes, shem asum kezi, or yes, shem asum kezi. Yes, for gunumem urishtek hayer emanum iran kasumen. Our experiences the last five to ten years have been. The engineers and coders in Armenia are some of the best. I don't know how to code, but I see they're some of the best engineers, coders in the world. They go to a university in, 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 uh, in, in India, which I've been to, called IIT. It's better than MIT, they say. Many, many people say, experts say that IIT is better than MIT. IIT produces the best engineers. This is why a lot of these bigger companies hire Indians from IIT, right? But it's Armenians building a reputation that they're developing some of the best engineers. So respect to people in Armenia, but make it, I think, Armenian parents need to encourage their kids to go into business instead of naiteres, dupitikam, doctor elnes, kampiti chamanum, you know, incha, it's doctor, lawyer, engineer, what is it? Yeror tevor mekana, is it engineer? So, yes, as a mom, yes, doctor chemel nalu. Yes, lawyer Chemel Nalu, yes, engineer Chemel Nalu, but yes, Shat Ujahamel Nalu, or the business of Manal. Talk Kotaret Gortsani. By his college degree, Unes Hala, Chechunem Mam. Her chess on business, yes, Pet Kachunem. In Samarchi, yes, business. So, at predisposition of our men cards and for Amena successful, at our own Dr. Armen Sarkisian, you know, at each, there's many different ways. So, parents also play a role in this in a big way. And we have to kind of shift the way we speak to our kids because it inspires them to be who they're going to be 5, 10, 15, 20 years later. In Samar, in Kyankis match. So, now yes, mad hearts of our mink, mish hearts, no mink, incha. What are the keys to success? It is for, hey, inch pitiana, so make a kasi, chish kangai psakvi, kam chish martu psakvi, you know. Girk karta, kam chemanum ashkati, hardworking. You know, go save your money. Yek yek eti gina astvati et motikeli. Kam chemanum aroch. You know, take care of your health. Chish kera kurkier. You know, take care of it. Sirtit komitsa. 
you got to outwork your peers in your marketplace. Yes, Erkor Arach, Erkushati, in share, it was March 15th. So, Mes Hamar at the sales room is a closeout. In share, Erkus Gisher, yes, at Gisher Ashkatam. Vetsine come, yes, the come office, che? Ere Gisher, Minche Tasma Gukes office names, the Bochok Stachkar office, um, yes, Menag, Marion Ganats, Kai Ganats, Menag, yes. The lowest level of you competing in the marketplace is to outwork your peers, but that's not enough because a lot of people work hard, work hard, but that's not enough. Yegrorta is out improved, out improving cha. Yes, karam making asam asam gna stasad gir kkarta, kkarta arachini yegrorta yerorta chororta ingerorta tas. Okay. Oh my gosh, heto kates nes inch pesan khosum. You look at the world in a different way. Yes, chiman of our senses karanes kam senses karanes. It's amazing, right? Since matazumes. But it's a total rotation. Yet, you will see that in Kyrgyzstan, it's a Kyrgyz. And when I talk about it, the whole idea of success is constantly out improving, reading more, even though you've already learned a lot. Then it's strategy. Then it's lasting. Now, yes, you might care about your career. Yes, for yes, you might care about your career. Yes, for yes, you might care about your career. Yes, for yes, you might care about your career. Yes, for yes, you might care about your career. Yes, for yes, you might care about your career. Yes, for yes, you might care about your career. Yes, for yes, you might care about your Es manelu. Kites you dream. You kailumes inch ma o inches anel yet me million hanets. Yes me million anem in har hazar kta mamis. Ima es baner vokhosum ek che. Okay. Bait ches imanum ob menak hink tari al last anelu. Kam tas tari, kam ksan tari, kam yeresun tari, kam karasun tari. Most people menak matatsum en yeresun or Innocent or metari. Yes, metari reports them real estate. That's thinking in China. Yes, as metari reports them as insurance. That's thinking in China. Yes, metari as television. Abana anak. That's thinking in China. Yes, metari. That's she has got on business. Yeah, for do as much as tas tari as a man. Hello. Eti ushkat khos ki mej. Or as much tas tari, ksan tari. Yeah, for as much tas tari, ksan tari. Everybody else says tas tari, ksan tari. So that's why she has got on. Or yes, man, but some sirumat hats pani karak. You know, but don't utem kerakur. این گرنه رو چند خمیش ماد لف خمیک بامان، باید کام که یو نو، لیسن یو نو، ای دونت بیلیف وار پوت هیر تو جس دو سمتین سمال. وان دو موس دیسکورجینگ تینگز ای سیز وان ای سی پیپل وار ا لاتا تالنت وایست در تالنت نه دوین سمتین وایت ایت. و اسپشیلی وان ایس ام اون کالچر، بیکاز ام آرمینیان، ام سیریان، ام فرم ایران. بات درس ناتینگ لایک یو سی سمبادی هو هاز سرتن گیفتس، دی پوت ایت تو یوز، و دی انسپایر ان انتایر جنریشن. Our community needs more leaders like that. We have them right now, but we need more of them. Ima, oh, Lika. In some are nor yes, Aran's got that. Yes, yes. In mid case, match is Norsk Sumem. Yes, Norsk Sumem. In Kankas business, in match of Incha Manelu. Yes, Norsk Sumem. Kara Suner Kutari. You know, yes, yes. Me bang me akam grama. Some there's four twenties. Kyo kyan kit match. Arachik Santarin. You hope you don't make big mistakes. Big mistakes, incha. Big mistakes. Get us for gnumes, shamanum. It's just drugs, prison. You hope you don't make big mistakes the first 20 years, and you learn about people, personalities. Ye grot ksantari, gna business ashkati ksantari. Ye gna ksantari ashkati. Pogat hani. As hard as we're pogat shamanum, esa eta. Go make your money. The third 20 is creative, right? Creative, where you're investing in your passion. And the last one is contribution. I'm at a phase right now where I've had the privilege of building a good financial company, insurance company, and a media company. I just moved to Boca Raton seven weeks ago. I moved my media company here. My headquarters still in Dallas. If you go to my headquarters office, there's nearly 100 employees there. They run the entire operations. We have technology, software, engineers, everything that's over there. This is a complete separate company. We have 25 employees that are working out of here. There are two different companies that we're talking about. But now at 42. I know what I know, and I'm pretty good at what I know. Okay, maybe one of the best in the world at what I know, which means this is when I decide what my next five, ten, fifteen moves are going to be, and they're not small things. We're planning on doing some major things in the world of business and life, and 
the dreams you're talking about, I've, I've had the most incredible experiences. I've had relationships and conversations with the most incredible human beings in the world. Whether it's successful people from business to successful people in sports to mobsters to presidents to public officials to CIA agents to FBI agents, I have very good relationships with a lot of people. And all of that has been fed here to use on what to do the next 40 years. God willing, if I stay healthy and God keeps me strong, I plan on doing something very special to make him proud the next 40 years. And they're all in my mind, but I can't reveal all of them. But there's so many things in this mind of dreams. And so all I'm going to say is the next 10, 15, 20 years are going to be very special 20 years. Um, is there anything else I want to add? Yes, it would be two things. Okay, two things that I would want to talk to the Armenian community. When you think about the Armenian community, we have historically voted Democrat. Okay, we vote Democrat is what we vote. And this is probably not a direction you thought I was going to go to, but I'm going to go in this direction to talk about this. Um, sometimes as Armenians, Ir or Iranians, or Assyrians, we forget why we came to America. Matazi, her minke kan Amerika. Yete Yerevan et kan laver, her ekar Amerika. Yete Pars kastan et kan laver, her ekar ka Amerika. Inchi hamar. Yete Asuries, yev du Pars kastan et seskam Irak, kam, you know, inch tegela seskas, her ekar ka Amerika men. Inchi hamar. Menke kan steg inche, vorte kofen steg lavota, kerakur steg lavota. Borshe steg lavota, inche steg lavota. Inche amar menke kank Amerika. Menke kank Amerika, vor tev, yete Rusastan estu apre, ovor elni, Rusastanu mek ich shat batsa, vor, you know, whether it's corruption, it exists. Vites et presidente vor Putin it's mek ich campaign around, Putin asab dir, you know, in prison. Eti ches kara du Amerika omanez, che, di eti ka ate. Ինչի համար մենք եք ամերկա։ Խոսք դա կարա ստեղ ասես։ Freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of եթե ուզում ես հրացան ունենաս տեղ legally կարող ես ունենաս, այդտեղ կարող է legally չելնի, բաստեղ կարող ես ունենաս։ Եթե ուզում ես 1 միլիոն հանես, կարող ես, եթե ուզում ես 1 բիլիոն հանես, կարող ես, եթե ուզում ես 200 բիլիոն հանես, անունդ մաս կա, կարող ես հանես։ Այսի ամերկայա, չէ՞։ Օքեյ։ Էլ ինչի համար մենք եք ամերկա։ Ենք ենք ամերկա, որ մենք կարող ենք so when it comes down to politically, sometimes mink etrahamar vote chenkanu. Mink vote en kanu vote mink as mink oh, esrank meznitz mechner na gali, esrank mezi koknen, srans mink vote anek. That is chielni. Jahel population in pititak nesti asi, okay, mer family in ekelen stek, vote uzumin free elnen. Մենք ինչպես պիտի ամերկան վոտ անենք, որ մենք վրիմ մնանք։ Ետի նոմ էր մեկնա Younger Population ենտել լսում են, եվ I'm sure a few mothers are very unhappy with me, okay, on what I just said. Եկրորդը, Armenian Genocide, ամեն տարի գլենդելում, լանդնում, դիչրոյթում, նու յորքում, ասես որ Հետո մարջը վլագը պահում ենք, բրադվոյա, կամ չամանում բրենդա, որ տեղ որ կա, մենք հայրում ենք, ոկե, վիդիոները բյուրվով, տեսում ես ամեն հայր ինչպես յունայրեն ենք միասին, ոկե, բայց, մուվինք վորդ, մարդիկ չես կարո բայց եթե ինվլունս ենք ուզում անենք, այս ապրիլ որ գալիսա, այսի որ կանի տարի այլնելու այս անգամ որ գալիսա, այլնելու ենչ, հարուր վեծ տարի, թե հարուր կանի տարի այլնելու այսի, 1915, հարուր վեծ տարի, ոկե, հարուր վեծ տարի մու գալիսա, ոկե, մտացի կանի հոգի պողոցի վրա մարջ են անում հայերը, հարու հազար, էրկուար հազար, մեն միլիոն, կանի հոգի, ասենք մեն միլիոն, ոկե, կանի հոգի թուրի վրա կարող են բայդնին և Վայդհասի բայց ինչ որ անում ես թուրի վրա թույտ առա և թակ Վայդհաս բայդն Չրամպ, այդ երեկին թակ առա, բոլորին թակ առա, Վայդհաս բայդն Չրամպ, երեկին թակ առա, ուեն, և հարցը հարցրու, այդ 
approach-ը հետո չի կարող էլնի հեր չեք անում տարար այդ որտե ոչ ոք կտենցի չեն չես կարող անես influence պիտի խոսա սիրա հետ ասես այսի հայերի community-նա մենք այսի ծեզին սպետք ունենք երբ են կարող meeting ունենանք ծեզ այդ white house image then you lead to the next step which is let's have a meeting at the white house sitting down there asking what do we need to do to recognize armenian genocide that was a real event that took place okay when i think that approach will get more media attention and the attention of the right influencers than us going in the streets i am not discounting not going in the streets i'm highly encouraging going in the streets even more people going in the streets but we need the same amount of people going on the streets to tweet five times at the president at the white house at the right senators at the right governors to get the right kind of attention that we need because that's what's going to get people to say oh my gosh look how many people are asking for this then we will get a response with the hopes of going to the white house and making some progress so those would be the two messages i would give as my final thoughts politically study a little bit more before you decide to vote the direction you're voting and number 2 if this year when we go out there and march on april 24th let's make sure we're also marching on twitter because that's when all the politicians live on thank you very much patrick it was a pleasure for us to be here in florida thank you very much i really enjoyed it thanks for coming out